All right, man, thanks for joining me. This is gonna be the fastest video I've ever made. Basically, the things I want to accomplish tonight is to do some listening and frequency testing of these STS-1230 Radio Shack Optimus RCA speakers. They are bone stock with the exception of an upgraded crossover. And I did that in the last video. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But uh, yeah, so today it's just real quick, uh, do some listening, do some frequency sweeps, and then we're done. And then I can get moving along with actually putting uh, new drivers in there and stuff. But I just wanted to see what happens if you take an old cheap set of speakers and put a decent crossover in them. Does it make a difference? Does it make sense to do it? All right, so I'm getting sick of listening to the same old music. So I'm going to try to use this old disc of mine. It's an old ripped disc, but uh, this was my Speaker Boy uh, dynamic range sampler disc. And uh, anyway, it's got some good tunes on it. Um, only problem is that it's so old and scratched up. It's like, I mean, it's over 20 years old, 25 years old, maybe. But uh, anyway, it skips and stuff like that. So I'm just going to kind of bounce through these songs. But there's some songs on here I haven't heard in a while. Maybe you'll like them, maybe you won't. But uh, anyway, it'll give us an idea of what these things sound like. All right, I started this up. I'm going to try it at minus 25 dB at first. It's running over digital, so it might get a little bit loud. I'm not sure. If I can turn it up a little bit, I will. I just don't want to go uh, making the microphone on the camera this morning. Well, the guitar sounds really nice. No complaints. Ooh, something funky's coming from them tweeters. Little crackly sounds. I'm not sure what that's all about. camera up close so you can hear that. That's weird. I wonder if that's just from, I wonder if that's just from the old disc and maybe scratches on it. Let's try a different song. No, I still hear it. Yeah, that disc is, something is wrong with that disc. All right, well, the next best thing, the quickest thing I got to grab is this one that uh, we've been listening to, Speaker Test with uh, Real Instruments. I play this over and over, though. Well, if nothing else, chances are I probably played these in their original stock form using this disc. So maybe, maybe I can dig up one of those old recordings and try to compare them. By the way, you're right at tweeter level right now. Yeah, so I don't hear that 
scratching anymore. Must have been the disc. Hey, the guitar sounded good though, right? And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but it's playing at minus 25 dB. Just for clarity for the um, microphone on here on the cell phone that I'm recording with. I'll turn it up if I can, but uh, I'll have to tell if it's seems like it's going to overpower the phone or not. Merchant's voice sounds a little bit shrill. I don't know for certain how. And I love Natalie Merchant. She does not have a shrill voice, so it's definitely the speakers, not her voice, causing the problem. It sounds clear and it sounds tight. better imaging now than it did with the stock crossover. It sounds almost like she's right in, in the middle of us here. Sounds like she's floating right there in between us. Not much bass on these.
Oh, so John Cougar definitely sounds better. This song sounds so much better right now than it did when these speakers were stock. So that is a major improvement that's only contributable to that crossover. I mean, his voice is clear, it's not irritating, it's got really good imaging. With that said, it does sound a little flat and a little bit shrill, uh, but I think that that's the, the actual transducers, the original Radio Shack transducers causing that problem. try to turn her up, uh, turn Tracy Chapman up a little bit, just to see what these things do with the stock drivers. I'm going minus 15. I usually don't go this high on digital. Oh, uh, let's make it minus 10. Why not? stuff that sounds so nasty it just it just comes out worse when it's turned up loud all right so that's enough listening on these cheap speakers all right so um did the crossovers make a difference yes they absolutely did do the speakers sound better now with those expensive big crossovers in them do they sound better than they used to? Yes, they do. If you had to pay full price for those crossovers or design and build them yourselves with quality components, would it be worth it? Absolutely not. Bang for the buck, it just ain't there. So the expensive La Spada Audio crossovers that I just put in these speakers, they did improve it in ways that I didn't even expect. Um, the imaging, I didn't know that a crossover could do that to imaging. I mean, it literally, like, it used to just sound like the voices were coming directly off the baffles. Completely di distinguishable between left and right. Um, now it sounds like, you know, they're floating up here in space. So, awesome, awesome, positive thing there. Um, the clarity and the tightness of it, uh, much more... I mean, it's definitely apparent. It's uh, audibly apparent uh, that it's clearer, that it's tighter. Um, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I think that it's being held back by these stock drivers. So again, bang for the buck. I would start with the drivers and then move on to the crossovers personally, as long as the drivers you're choosing, you know, work uh, well and get along well. <laughs> With your with your crossover um, yeah wow okay I'm gonna do a quick uh, couple of sweeps on these things and then we'll call it a wrap on this video okay so just to make life simpler here I'm just gonna run a sweep with the Dayton Omni mic hooked up to the Chromebook and I'm using um, Spectroid I think it's called um, the test I'm going to run, though, I'm not going to mess around with uh, hooking up the Omnimic DVD and that. I'm just going to run the Dr. Mix test sweep. It's called Test Your Speakers by Dr. Mix, and it's kind of a long sweep. Uh, this will be both speakers combined at minus 20 dB.
If you want to know more about our mixing and mastering services, please visit us on drmix.com. See you later. So that's pretty amazing. That, um, that frequency response actually looks a lot cleaner than it did when I ran these things with the stock crossovers in them. So I think that these crossovers definitely cleaned up the frequency response. I will have to double check the bass though, because the bass, I'm not sure if that's the way it was before or not. I can't really remember. I'll have to pull up some old screenshots of uh, the frequency sweeps when they were, you know, untouched. Uh, but basically, yeah, um, let both speakers combined. We could probably do, you know, the right speaker and then the left speaker just to see, you know, if it makes any change or not. But, uh, you know, combined, that's uh, pretty nice flat up toward the top, especially. I mean, well, all the way across the mid-range and the top, it looks pretty darn flat. Uh, the base is where it gets kind of wonky on here. All right, let me uh, try to set up for just one speaker. All right, so I've got a speaker set up. I'm just going to measure one. I'm sure that they're both the same. Um, and I am exactly three feet away from the mic. And as far as being level, oh, the mic's just a tiny, tiny bit, maybe down here on the tweeter, but it's pretty close to being level with the tweeter. So that's where everything's set up right now. Hi, welcome to Dr. Mix. This is a signal test for you. Enjoy. If you want to know more about our mixing and mastering services, please visit us on drmix.com. Yeah, so, man, I'm impressed. I did not uh, did not see that coming at all. I mean, that frequency response, you could really see it when just measuring one speaker. I mean, that thing is, that's pretty darn flat for an off-the-shelf crossover. I am surprised that it, it really produced a much cleaner frequency response even with these really cheap drivers in here. So, yeah, I'm anxious to see what happens when I uh, put the better drivers in the cabinets because if it exhibits the same behavior with the drivers that I'm putting in there, um, I might be looking at a pretty nice frequency response. Hoping. Here's hoping. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining me again, and I appreciate you watching the videos i do them just because it's a labor of love it's a passion of mine channel again i've said it before i'll say it again it's not like monetized i'm not looking for subscribers and likes and all that kind of stuff basically i would be working on these speakers regardless so why not film it and share it and maybe somebody would be interested in it uh if you got comments questions etc just drop them in the comments. I try to get to them right away within a day or two. All right. Well, have a good night.